Let's keep a good thing going. The truth about the atonement, part eight. Going to continue with this. And you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And there's a difference between what modern day Christianity teaches about the atonement and what the Bible actually teaches about the atonement, the truth about the atonement. And we need to be made free to understand it. The true purpose of the atonement, God's plan for humanity through Jesus Christ, the at one the atonement. Reading from A.P. Adams, writing the atonement, picking up where we left off. Oh, how low are our ideas of God's ways. Verily, his thoughts are not our thoughts, nor are his ways our ways. The highest idea that many Christians have of the atonement is that it is a scheme whereby they are to be saved from the penalty of sin and endless hell. When the truth is, God's purpose is to make out of this world of demon-possessed sinners a race of God-like saints, to lift mankind out of this condition of death into life and immortality. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. In this view also we see how thoroughly and absolutely the entire work of the atonement was of God. If man is lost, he cannot find himself. If man is dead, he cannot give life unto himself or help himself in the least. We are God's workmanship. Let it be noticed that it is in connection with this work of the atonement that Paul makes the statement that all things are of God. Read it. All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, this great work of reconciliation being all complete and perfect, a finished work, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. God is reconciled to you. He has never been unreconciled. Now be reconciled to him. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let it be noticed that the finished, completed work of reconciliation is made the ground of the invitation to the sinner to be reconciled to God. In the popular theology of the day, it is put just the other way. Preachers invite sinners to repentance and obedience in order that the work of reconciliation may be accomplished. Paul teaches us to tell the impenitent sinner that the work of reconciliation is already done. Therefore, be reconciled to God. So far as God is concerned, the work is all done. Now then, submit yourself unto God that you may know this great truth practically and may enjoy it to your heart's great comfort. The preacher should not call upon the sinner to turn unto God in order that he may be redeemed. But he is to declare unto him first full redemption and make that the ground and the reason why he should turn unto God. So God speaks to his ancient people by his prophet. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins, return unto me, for I have redeemed you. Not return unto me, and I will redeem you, but because I have redeemed you. Sing, O you heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest and every tree therein. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Oh, how glorious is the glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. But alas, 
how we mutilate it and twist it out of shape with our wretched man-made theology and make it sad tidings of great sorrow to many who, lost and dead and without strength, fail to fulfill the conditions which the church and not the word has made the prerequisites of redemption. Thus now, as of old, God's nominal people shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. They put the cause for the effect and the effect for the cause. They make the ground of man's repentance the end of that repentance, thus making the accomplishment of God's work dependent on poor, weak man and thereby representing the covenant of promise as no better than the law covenant. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Surely there is an infinite difference between God's I have done it and I will do it if you will do thus and so. In regard to the last verse of the passage quoted, I will only say now that Christ, who knew no sin, was made sin by fully partaking of man's fallen nature, and we are made the righteousness of God in him by just as fully partaking through Christ of God's divine nature. So we can see there the atonement is something that's totally dependent upon God himself. When you think of what was stated in the old covenant, first there was a covenant given to man and God said, if you do this, then I'll do that. But then he said, the day's coming when I am going to establish a covenant with you. I will write my laws in your inward parts and I will do this great thing and all shall know the Lord. On the whole earth, we're told that. This is something that God is doing. He has sworn that every knee will bow to him and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we must see this is something that God has done, past tense. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Yes, we must press into this and believe it and call on the name of the Lord, but we must do it for the right reasons and realize we're coming to a God that has already accomplished something. When a person comes to the Lord and they repent, Jesus doesn't all of a sudden get up on a cross again and die for him at that moment. It's already done. And so we are called as ambassadors of Christ to tell people about this. Hey, be reconciled to God. He was in Christ reconciling you unto him. Believe it and press into it, and walk in it, and enjoy it, and go through the process that he has set out before you. Hallelujah. Beautiful words about the truth about the atonement.